How you doing, YouTube? Matt, Massive Beer Reviews, back with yet another review. A little bit of, uh, yeah, winter porter time in the form of Hill Farmstead Brewing's Twilight of the Idols. Um, this is their winter porter brewed with coffee and cinnamon and aged on vanilla beans. Um, yeah, it's been a hot minute since I've done a Hill Farmstead beer, but this one actually comes courtesy of my buddy Keith. Thank you very much, brother. He dropped it off yesterday, actually. Um, and he was my original OG other half connect, and he's quickly becoming my Hill Farmstead connect. Uh, he's dropped off a couple Hill Farmstead beers over the past month or so. I haven't posted them. Maybe I'll post a couple the same day I post this. Actually, this is the day before New Year's Eve. I'm probably going to post this either New Year's Eve or New Year's Day, so happy New Year's to everybody out there. Uh, yeah, let's jump to the chase here. Or get to the meat of the situation, or any other kind of saying that you'd like to hear. Well, that's bad. Anyway, uh, Twilight of the Idols. It's a winter porter brewed with coffee and cinnamon and aged and vanilla beans. Hill Farmstead, bottled on October 31st, 2018. On the side here is this Twilight Idols. This is our winter porter. We brew this beer each autumn with a touch of coffee and aged on a, a blend of select vanilla beans. Originally conceived with a friend in 2009 while brewing in Denmark, the name of this annual release is inspired by the title of the last text written by one of our philosophical idols, Nietzsche, uh, Frederick Nietzsche. Uh, Hill Farm Sub Brewery is a combination, we pretty much talk about the brewery in the same way on each bottle. Maybe that, no ABV on this. I'm kind of curious to see how she comes off. I've never had this before, and it's it's pretty much that, like, I'm going to call it the hipster line of what Hill Farm said does, but they have kind of their OG bottle styles and they have these kind of jet black style bottles. So, you know, simple to the point. I dig it. So, let's see what this sucker has. <laughs> yeah, I'm super excited for the New Year. Not necessarily New Year's Eve. I will sit home and do a whole lot of nothing because that's what I do on New Year's Eve. But, yeah, what do we have there? We have a, uh, a beautiful kind of rich, creamy-looking uh, Imperial Porter, it looks like. You know, something a bit darker. The head doesn't come off as white as you'd expect with a base porter. So, you know, rich creaminess on top. A little bit of rockiness on the edges. Uniform bubbles throughout. It sends a couple stragglers, and she's got a soft darkness to her. Soft darkness. I don't know. It sounds like a metal band from Norway or some shit like that. But she looks like a porter. Let's get a nose. We're talking about coffee and vanilla beans here. Inside. Yeah, that's nice. Um, it doesn't come off, and this is a, a positive for me. This isn't like a negative. All those, that coffee, the cinnamon, the vanilla, the beer itself, all come off as equal partners. Yeah, you're getting the soft, almost the vanilla comes off very lactose-like as opposed to a bright kind of um, candied kind of citrus. Or citrus, vanilla. The coffee's there, it's nice, it's roasty, but it's not overpowering. It's almost like a, if you've ever had a really nice roasted um, uh, roasted malt beer um, that kind of exhibits coffee, uh, uh, bits and pieces to it. This is a bit above one of those ones that really is like, okay, there's no coffee in this, but I'm, I'm, I kind of think there's coffee in it. This one is like, okay, there's definitely coffee in it, but it's just above there, so it doesn't get overpowering. And the cinnamon's very much almost just behind that, but that's a that's a good thing as far as balance goes, because cinnamon being equal to everything else, it's just it's still cinnamon, so you kind of get it a little bit more. Um, so it's, yeah, it's nice. The beer is definitely there. You get a nice roasted malt component to it. You get that nice soft vanilla. It comes off a little bit soft lactose -y, but not overly sweet by any means whatsoever, and a soft roast. I mean, it is literally balance personified, which is kind of what Hill Farm said does, so let's dive in. Cheers. Okay. See, based off the nose and based off of everything you're getting, you expect it to skew a little bit sweet. Not really sweet, not too sweet. The sweeter just comes off a bit roastier, a bit drier. It comes off a bit more like a cold pressed kind of, um, or a cold coffee as opposed to a coffee beer. Very coffee like, but not over the top. Yeah. It's very soft, very gentle. It's very much a porter. The ABV on this, I have no... It's definitely not a big beer. Let's put it that way. I don't think it's like a base porter. I don't think it's like 5%, but it's definitely not like an imperial porter, like 7%. It's probably like an, like 
give or take like 7%, somewhere right around there. So it's not a big beer. And then you get this infinite creaminess across the whole beer. That's probably the biggest calling card of the beer. It's probably the thing that kind of jumps into my brain um, as vibrant. as the most kind of um, telling um, sensory note from the beer itself. The coffee is definitely second. It's nice. There's a bittering component to it, which marries well with the roasted malts, but there's also a heaping helping of nice, rich, kind of almost like greeny, kind of fleshy kind of coffee on it. Now, the vanilla and the cinnamon are almost equal parts in the background. The vanilla is not big at all. There's a touch of it. It's just like the little bit of drop of cream in your coffee, just enough to add a little bit of sultriness to it. And then you add that cinnamon in there too. It's the slightest dash of cinnamon. Just to add a extra component, some additional level to that, um, to that uh, portion of the show, uh, to even a, like a coffee. I keep wanting to relate this to an actual coffee because that's how it drinks. It's like a very well done, very soft kind of uh, Americano style, soft, non overly roasted, but same time impactful kind of coffee. It just happens to be in beer form. Yeah, it's tasty. It's a tasty beer. It's not. It's not overly bonkers. It's not like crazy overt flavors to your face. I mean, you talk about a beer. You talk about, you know, a, 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 a I mean, they call it a winter porter, but I'm talking about a dark beer with vanilla and cinnamon and coffee. A lot of people immediately knee jerk to like, oh, this is going to be a big, huge, crazy kind of beer. Well, it doesn't come off that way. It's super reserved. Well, at the same time, that, that level of reservedness has an impactfulness to it. I mean, it's just pretty. I mean, you know, it's it's almost a cop out to use that word sometimes, but it's just pretty. It is very meaningful. It's a very soft, meaningful, deft hand when it comes to what's going on with this beer, and that's a beautiful thing. Um, it's again, Hill Farmstead personified. It's 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 typically aggressive flavors that are that are done very meaningful and purposeful. Let's repeat words thousand times so anyway let's cut to the chase um is it one of the better porters i'm not gonna go it's not that borderline but it's not imperial it's a porter one of the better uh, adjunct porters that i've had as of late yeah it just works for me i mean one of the big sticking points when it comes to darker beers more particularly porters stuff that i assume this beer is which is sub like nine eight percent you know getting down to five six seven percent like i said is probably around like 7% I'm assuming is I get this big metallic astringency from all of those beers the lower ABV you go in those roasted beers that's usually what Rears and Sudley had zero of that in this beer whatsoever the way they play that vanilla and that cinnamon and the coffee together to work so well with the beer but neither of them get like in your face and become a dominant flavor that's skill right there and leave you with if you like what will you like this beer um, I mean I'm glossed over the whole value and availability thing because I have no idea. Keith gave it to me until so said so. Uh, if you like what we like this, if you like porters, uh, you want something a bit more impactful, well-made, one of the better porters you'll ever have. Uh, it, I'm trying to see if... Nah, we won't get there. I was going to relate it to other Hill Farmstead beers. Oops. Um, but it, 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 if you like those flavors, if you like cinnamon, you like vanilla, you like uh, coffee, but you feel like a lot of people go way too out in that field or try to just crank every drop of flavor into a beer when they do that, and the beer tends to get lost, and you still want the beer to be the star of the show, this, this will do you all the propers. So there you go. Another review in the books. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Down there if you want to talk about it. Massive beers if you want to check me out doing the social media stuff. Beer massive. If you want to check me out doing the whole podcasting thing, and hopefully you guys enjoyed your review. Hopefully enjoying this. Hill Farmstead beer right now. Hopefully see you next time. Happy New Year.